Praise the Lord. This is Dr. C. Dexter Wise III, and welcome back to TNT. TNT means Tuesday night teaching. It's Tuesday night, and we're teaching. We're mighty glad that you've joined us here. We don't know where you're watching us from or what platform you're watching us on, but however you are doing it, we're glad that you made it. This is also a great time for you to share and let people know that we are on the air. We are on live on Facebook. We're on YouTube. We're on the church uh, website, uh, various ways that you can get us. So share that with your family and friends. Tell them we've got a good lesson coming up tonight. In fact, we're continuing our new series and our new series is entitled Help Somebody Save Us. Superheroes, super sheroes, ourselves and our savior. Superheroes, super sheroes, ourselves and our savior. Up to now, we have uh, talked about Superman. Last week, we talked about The Incredibles. And today, we're going to talk about Wonder Woman. Okay, so uh, let's uh, get our scripture in the record. It comes to us from Proverbs chapter 3. 23 and Proverbs chapter 31 verses 10 through 31 Proverbs 31 10 through 31 incidentally uh, just throw this in as a bonus many people wonder uh, when they start reading the Bible where they start how they should start and so forth one of the easy ways to do is to get yourself in the rhythm of reading scripture is to start with the book of Proverbs Proverbs has 31 chapters and uh, there are 31 days in a month in many of those months and if you just take one chapter per day you'll have uh, under your belt after a month you will have read a whole book and that may not seem like a big deal to some people because some people can sit down and read the whole thing at once but to people who are just trying to find a place to start here's a bunch of wisdom here's a bunch of proverbs and pearls that you can find every single day for a month so I just throw that in as a bonus because here we are in the last chapter of the book of Proverbs, verses 10 through 31. Here's what it says. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. She's like the merchant ships. She brings forth food from afar. She riseth also while it is yet night and giveth meat to her household and a portion to her maidens. She considereth a field and buys it and with the fruit of her hands she planteth a vineyard. She girdeth her loins with strength and strengtheneth her arms. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Her candle goeth out not by night. She layeth her hands to the spindle and her hands hold the distaff. She stretcheth out her hand to the poor, yea, she reaches out forth her hands to the needy. She's not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. She makes fine linen and sells it and delivereth girdles unto the merchants. She strengthen or strength and honor are her clothing and she shall rejoice in the time to come. She openeth her mouth with wisdom and in her tongue is the law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children arise up and call her blessed. Her husband also and he praiseth her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excelleth them all. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord she shall be praised. Give her the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. Proverbs chapter 31 verses 10 through 31. Okay, let's bow for a word of prayer. Thank you, Father, for this opportunity and this privilege for us to come before you as we bring to you this word and these words about your people. We ask that you would consecrate us first, then consecrate them to your glory. 
in Jesus name we pray and for his sake amen all right so now tonight we're talking about Wonder Woman and we're using as a biblical backdrop Proverbs 31 but before we actually get to what the Bible as such says let's look at the character let's look at this Wonder Woman let's see a little bit about her history since 1941 DC Comics has been spinning the tales of Wonder Woman Princess Diana as she is called is an Amazon who comes from the mythic island of Themyscira, and she is said to be beautiful as Aphrodite, wise as Athena, swifter than Hermes, and stronger than Hercules. Her superhero powers include super strength, invulnerability, flight, combat skill, combat strategy, superhuman agility, healing factor, and magic weaponry. Both her friends and foes must acknowledge that she is indeed a force to be reckoned with. Since 1941, DC Comics has been talking about this woman, Wonder Woman. And if you think about it, all the way back in 1941, that's pretty, uh, a pretty pioneering thing, a pretty radical thing. But she's been around for a mighty long time. Now, what kind of comments can we make about Wonder Woman? What kind of commentary can we have about this comic book superhero? Well, the staying power and appeal of Wonder Woman is attributable in part to some of the following features about her character. Number one, she is a woman. I want you to understand that, of course, when we talked about several of these other superheroes, we talked about um, Superman. Superman started, I believe, in 1936, and before him, the Panther started in 1934, and here we have Wonder Woman in 1940, 1941. So it's the case that uh, there were several years when there were superheroes, but all of those superheroes were men. Uh, the, uh, the introduction of Wonder Woman into this series or into the superhero pantheon is a way of introducing not only a woman but introducing the audience of women into the comic book so so the idea of her being a woman just that she is a woman as such is uh, something that gives her staying power and has an appeal for a wider audience secondly she is a super or Wonder Woman. She's not a servile woman. She's not a subservient woman. She's not a um, disappearing woman. She is a super and a Wonder Woman. And so, of course, we will say a little bit about more about her superpowers and her being a Wonder Woman, if not tonight on Sunday when we pick this up again. But she's not just a regular run-of-the-mill average woman. She is a super woman. And then she is equal to, and perhaps even superior to, to male superheroes and this is uh, what is also important about Wonder Woman is that she is on par as a peer with uh, many most if not all of the male superheroes she's not just somebody who joins the gang because they don't they can't pick anybody else she stands toe-to-toe -to -toe with all of them and they need her powers as much and so she's not just a, a woman character who's thrown in to help the demographics she's wanting because she's got something to contribute to what is happening in whatever save the world problem that she has and then number four she is uh, from a race of super women and a place where women rule she is an Amazon you know many of us know about the river Amazon many of us know about Amazon Amazon when we buy packages but she is an Amazon that's the name of a race of women a mythic race of women where all the women are warriors where where everybody who lives there is a woman there are no no men in the place where she's from and of course they become self-sufficient they become uh, warriors they've been, been able to take care of themselves and other people and so she she is an Amazon from a long line of places where women rule if you think about that a lot of the people that you know a lot of the women that you know who are strong women who have strengths in so many ways they didn't just get that way they come from a long line of women who have been models for them in that area and then number four she is a warrior who hates war and fights 
for peace. So these Amazons, they are, they are warriors indeed. I mean, they know how to fight. They know how to use a bow and arrow and a sword. Uh, in fact, part of their mission, according to the movie, is they have been sent to Earth to destroy war. Uh, war has broken out uh, in mankind. It has polluted mankind. It has uh, destroyed the beautiful uh, world that, quote, Zeus had created. And their job is to bring peace to the world. But they can only do that by fighting in wars. And so, so they are prepared to be warriors. And they don't fight just to be fighting. They fight to end war and to bring peace. So these are some of the characteristics that we find when we read or when we watch the uh, Wonder Woman uh, issues in the comics or watch them in the movies. Now, what is the comparison to Christ? What does woman, Wonder Woman have to do with us? It's hard to mention Wonder Woman and not think immediately about Proverbs 31. It's there that King Solomon describes the virtuous woman. He notes how rare she is, how valuable she is, and frankly, how wonderful she is. According to Proverbs 31, the virtuous woman may not be from a mythic island, but she does exemplify inexplicable powers and abilities. And so what I'm going to do today and uh, for the balance of our time is I'm just going to go through uh, so, uh, Proverbs 31 verses 10 through 31 and point out some of the characteristics of this virtuous woman that uh, Solomon mentions. And I want you to understand that she doesn't have quote unquote superpowers, but she is super to the degree that she has these traits that makes her different. She has these traits that makes her excel, if you will. She has these traits which make her stand out. And if you want to list of a woman, a profile of a woman who has wonderful characteristics, who can work wonders, here it is. Th this is the perfect uh, picture, if you will, of a wonder woman who doesn't have quote unquote superpowers from another planet. This is a woman who does everyday work that women do, everyday work that women have in some ways been forced to do. and everyday work which women have been blessed to do. She does those with such grace, with such power, with such value that there's no way that you can look at her and not say that's a wonder woman. Okay, so let's just go through the list. Let's just go through the list. Here are some of the things that Solomon says are true of this virtuous woman. Number one, she is priceless. Verse number 10 says she is priceless. Who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies. You cannot tell, you cannot measure the value of a wonder woman, of a virtuous woman, because she is priceless. No matter what you give her in terms of jewels and gems, those do not equal her value. She is priceless. And then he tells us that she can be trusted. In verse number 11, she can be trusted. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. One of the things that you will find about uh, virtuous women and wonder women is that uh, they take care of business. <laughs> and when they take care of business, there are things that are taken care of that people don't even think about. And there's no need of spoil because they've all already taken care of it. They have exactly what they need. There's nothing left over to waste. And her husband, if she has a husband, can trust her that she's going to take care of those things and do those things for him. Now, of course, as a woman, uh, that may be a terrible burden to have to bear to be responsible for all of these things. But that's one of the wonders of this virtuous woman, that she can be trusted. And then she does good and not evil. We're going to get a little bit later to some of these. Uh, I think next week when we get to Dr. Strange, there's a woman in there. She's a sorcerer in there and uh, she's got all kinds of power. And needless to say, she does not do good. She does evil. And so it's not automatic that because a person is a woman, because a person is wonderful, because a person uh, does all of these virtuous things. It's not it's not automatic that they do good and not evil. But this particular Wonder Woman that uh, Solomon is talking about, she will will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. That's another reason why her, her price is far above Ruby. She does good and not evil. 
Then she's not afraid to work with her hands. Hmm, not afraid to work with her hands. If you work with your hands, people, some people consider that dirty work. Some people consider that slave work or servile work, but she's not afraid to work with her hands. Um, she does things with her hands. She fixes things with her hands. She cooks things with her hands. She cleans things with her hands. She blesses things with her hands. God has given her these hands and she uses those hands wisely. She works with her hands. Uh, I don't know if she's worried about her fingernails or worried about the color of breaking a nail, but whatever she does, she works with her hands. We have somewhat of a, a disdain sometimes for people who work with their hands and as it has been said they have to take a shower when they come home from work. But we thank God for those people who have the skills in their hands to create things, to make things, to change things, to fix things. And this woman is a woman who is not afraid to work with her hands. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. She layeth her hands to the spindle, and her hands hold the distaff." Now the spindle, of course, is that little thing, that little uh, thing that looks like a, a top, a, a spinning top, that has the yarn on it, and you slide it through the weave, uh, through the loom, and that's how she makes the, uh, the, the material that she makes clothes out of. So, so the spindle and the distaff are things that are used to make fabric, and uh, she does that with her hands. Next we find that uh, she is like the merchant ships. She bringeth her food from afar. And uh, with this verse, I say that she has an international reach, an international reach and a global vision. She's not stuck in her own house. She's not stuck in her own environment, but she sees things afar and she goes afar. And like merchant ships, she bring those things from afar. So she might have scarves from France, or she might have perfume from Italy, all of these things. She, she is not limited to where she is. And one of the things that helps to make women wonderful is that they are not bound by where they are. They have a curiosity, they have an imagination, they have a desire to reach out into the world to find out what the world is about and then bring that food home to her family. So she has an international reach, not just stuck in a specific neighborhood, a specific house, but she sees the whole world. She attempts to reach out into the world and brings that home to her family. Here's something else she does. She provides for her household. Now, typically you would think that the man is the provider, but according to this passage, she provides for her household. Uh, she provides because she rises up also while it is yet night and giveth meat to her household and a portion to her maiden. She looketh well to the ways of her household and eateth not the bread of idleness. I think one of the memories that many people have of their moms, I know I have of mine, is that by the time you wake up, your mom is already up. By the time you get out of bed, she's already up. She's already cooked breakfast or started breakfast. She's already got the, the, a load of clothes in. She's already started ironing and all of that. And so you still got sleep in your eyes, but she's the kind of woman that while it is still dark, she's up, she's moving around. And as quiet as it's kept, even when the children are raised, even when she's no longer working a regular uh, nine to five job, she's still up early in the morning because she is that kind of person who provides for her family. And provide means, the word provide means to see ahead. Pro means forward and video means to see. And so the word provide means to see ahead. And this wonder woman, this virtuous woman provides for her family because she sees ahead what the needs are and she makes sure that those needs are satisfied before the people come to them. And so she knows that you're going to need uh, water or or milk or whatever and she makes sure that the milk is there she knows you're gonna need paper towels so she makes sure the paper towels are there and of course this is something that uh, we just kind of take for granted when we have a person like that in our lives but when they are missing we go to the closet and there's no paper towels or we go to the refrigerator and there's no water that's because somebody has not been there to make that provision and so one of the the characteristics of Solomon's virtuous woman and our wonder woman is that 
she provides for her family, not just for her family, but even the people who are associated with her family, like her handmaidens, she makes sure that they have what they need. Next, we see in verse number 16 that she is a businesswoman, a businesswoman. She considereth a field, that's real estate, and buys it. And with the fruit of her hands, she plants a vineyard, a business woman. Here again, if you if you think about the ancient world and how male oriented they are or were, it's kind of radical to see a picture of a woman who's transacting business. And the purpose of her buying the field is so that she can plant a vineyard. And the vineyard is not just because she likes gardening, but she's trying to make some money. She's trying to make some money. So this woman is an entrepreneurial person. She's an entrepreneur. She's got an entrepreneurial spirit. And she realizes that, that even though she is a woman, she's not left out or should not be uh, restricted from entering into the business world. And so she becomes a model even for girls and women that you can consider a field. She thought about it. She's a wise person and she buys it. And the purpose for buying it is so that she can turn it into a productive piece of land. She's a businesswoman. That's key. And then of course she is strong. Verse 17 tells us she girds her loins with strength and strengtheneth her arms. And then I believe it's verse number 25 that tells us strength and honor are her clothing and she shall rejoice in time to come. She is a strong woman. She may not be an Amazon like Wonder Woman and not have that kind of strength where she can uh, pick up trees out the ground or something like that, but she has strength. And in fact, the text says strength and honor are her clothing. She's so full of strength that when you look at her, that's what you see, you see strength. Have you ever seen a woman and you could see strength in her? Have you just, just looked at her face? Sometimes you look at a picture of woman, a woman and, and you see beauty, but you also see strength. And it's not a masculine strength. It's not a manly strength. It's a godly strength. And that's the kind of strength that this woman has and many women that we know have. They have strength. They strengthen their arms. They strengthen the things that they reach and the things that they embrace. They strengthen their spirit. They strengthen their faith. Honor and strength are her clothing. When you see her, the first thing you see is not the outfit she has on or her hairdo, but you see strength coming at you. She is not a weakling. She is a strong woman. Verse number 18 tells us that she is self-confident. Self-confident. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. She perceives that her merchandise is good. So the stuff that she buys, the stuff that she sells, the stuff that she owns, the person that she is, she knows that it is good, that it is good. Th this is her self-confidence. This is her self-esteem. Regardless of what the men say, regardless of what other women say, she knows that her stuff is good. She knows her stuff is good. She's the kind of woman that'll walk by a mirror and say, uh, girl, you look good. She, she knows her stuff is good. And her candle does not go out by night, which is the opposite side of what we talked about before. Remember I said your mom wakes up early in the morning before you get up? Well, this lady, she's still woke when it's nighttime. Her candle does not go out by night. I'm thinking about our friends in Kenya. Uh, we provided some solar panels for them and uh, because they did not have electricity, they, they basically aren't able to do very basic things at night. And so when they have this solar panel, they have light in their house and of course children can study and so forth. Well, back in the day, if you didn't have electricity, the only thing you had at night was a candle. And what Solomon is saying is this woman is so studious. This woman is so, so, um, uh, determined. This woman is so, so much of a productive person that she gets up before the sun comes up. And when the sun goes down, she lights a candle and she's still working. And the things that she produces, the person that she is, she knows that her merchandise, merchandise is good. I can't emphasize this point enough because many women struggle with this self-esteem problem or low self-esteem because they have goods but they don't know that their goods or their merchandise is good. This woman becomes a wonder woman because she knows 
that her merchandise is good. And then verse 20, she helps those in need. She stretches out her hand to the poor, yea, reaches forth her hands to the needy. She helps those in need, not just the people in her household, not just her children and her husband and her handmaidens, but those who are in need. Then she makes the people around her look good. Verses 21 and 23. That's, that's a great thing. She makes the people around her look good. She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet, which means when it's winter time, she doesn't have to worry about whether her children or her husband going to get cold because they already got stuff. She's already taken care of that. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. She makes the people around her look good. All you got to do, all you got to do is go to any school, go to any school, elementary school, and just watch the kids get off the bus. And you can tell by their hair, you can tell by their clothes, who's at home getting them together. In fact, you know, the, the hair that our children have, the clothes that they wear, the way they come to school, it's somebody behind that. It's somebody behind that making them look good. Their shoes go with their socks and their pants go with their shirt and their hair has a little bow. It's somebody back there making them look good. You see these guys, I was talking to one of our members the other day. He came into my office and I said, your wife bought that, did she? She said, yeah, she bought it. I could just look at him and tell he had nothing to do with his outfit because it looked good <laughs> if it was left up to him yeah well he had plans and polka dots at the same time but there's a woman somewhere that made him look good you come into a house and you look around at the house and you say well there's a woman in this house somewhere that makes the house look good and one of the things about this wonder woman is not only does she clothe herself with strength and honor and tapestry but she makes her family look good. The reason her husband is known in the gate because she got him hooked up. She got him hooked up. And when he's out with the boys, when he's out uh, uh, talking, uh, making decisions in the council or whatever, they know that this woman is his wife by the way that he shows up. They know he didn't just do that by himself. She makes people around her look good that's part of the wonder of this woman she's able to make people who perhaps don't even feel good about themselves not only feel good about themselves but look good about the way it would look good when they present themselves to others and so this wonder woman has the power to lift up others and to make them feel better and look better about themselves or look better you know as themselves then in verse 26 we find out she is wise she is wise not just smart not just intelligent but she is wise she openeth her mouth with wisdom and in her tongue is the law of kindness the law of kindness so she's got a mouth and she's got a tongue but she's got wisdom and when she opens her mouth what regulates what she says is kindness. Not that she doesn't tell the truth, but she tells it with kindness. Not that she doesn't help people uh, get corrected, but she does it with kindness. So wisdom and kindness are the filters that uh, all of her words pass through when they come out to other people. That makes her a wonder woman, not just that she talks, not just that she speaks, not just that she's intelligent, but that she is wise. And when she speaks, what she says has to be uh, filtered through kindness. Is this kind? Not just is this right? Not just is this true? But is the way that I'm saying it, is the fact that I'm saying it kindness? So kindness is behind the way what she says is uh, shared and wisdom is behind the value of what she shares. Here we go to verse number 28. She is blessed by her children and honored by her husband. So all of these things that we've talked about up to now, this great long list of what this uh, virtuous or wonder woman does, it generates the blessing of her children 
and the honor of her husband. And blessing means to say good things about her. So her husband, uh, her children praise her because of what kind of mother she has been. Her husband honors her because of what kind of wife she has been. And so this is not necessarily what she is working for. This is not necessarily what she, why she is even doing it. But as a result of that, as the gravy on top of the meat, her children bless her and her husband honors her. Her children arise up and call her blessed. And her husband also, and he praises her. He praises her. Uh, he praises her, you know, when he goes in, in the gate, he's sitting in the council. And when I say the gate, in those days, the, the gate of the city was where the elders of the city met and they were typically all men. And so when these men go there and sit in the gate, what this text is saying is he's not just talking about city council issues. He's talking about his wife. He's praising his wife for all the things that she does. Verse 29, she is excellent. She is excellent. She excels. She exceeds. She goes over above and beyond regular ordinary standards not because she has superpowers from heaven but because she does what she does to an excellent degree excellent degree everybody cannot be perfect but everybody can be excellent excellent is doing up to and beyond your capability you can be excellent your, your excellency may not be uh, the winner of the Olympic gold, but you can have excellence as your standard and you can be excellent. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excelleth them all. You excel. She exceeds even the ones who are virtuous. Uh, this woman that Solomon is talking about and many of the women that we know in our lives. Verse number 30 says that she fears God fears God. So up to now, we've known her as a mother. We've known her as a wife. We've known her as a business person. We've known her as an employer. We've known her as a weaver. We've known her as a charity person. But part of the bottom line is all of this stuff adds up to and stands on the foundation that she fears God. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. But a woman that feared the Lord she shall be praised. Solomon made a big deal about noting these things, deceit, favor, and beauty. Favor is something that uh, people seek. Beauty is something that people want to have and try to amplify. But he says that her greatest characteristic is not her favor, is not her beauty, but that she fears the Lord. She worships the Lord. She respects the Lord. She praises the Lord. And because she does that, she shall be praised. And so because of her praise to God, other people praise her. She fears God. How many people do we know? How many women do we know who spend so much time in trying to be wonderful and wondrous in so many other ways and leave out the fear of God? They don't spend the time to worship him. They don't spend the time to praise him. They don't spend the time to honor uh, or wrap themselves in him so that when people see them, they not only see strength, but they see his spirit. She fears God. And Solomon says, if you have a woman that fears the Lord, she shall be praised. And then here we go to the very last thing. She deserves to enjoy the fruit of her labor. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. Give her the fruit of her own hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. Where I come from, that would basically be saying, give her what she makes. Give her what she makes. We're talking about these days equal pay for women. We're talking about, um, you know, uh, them being paid less than their male counterparts. That's basically what this saying is. Give her the fruit of her hands. Give, 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 give her what she makes. Give her what she earns. If she earned this, give it to her. Don't hold that back from her and let her own works praise her in the gates. Let what she does speak 
for her. So if you've gone through this whole list of all these things that this woman does, she deserves to get the benefits of what she has done with her hands, with her labor, and so on and so forth. So now you go through this list as we have just done, and you see so many characteristics of this virtuous woman that Solomon describes. And I see in her a wonder woman because it's a wonder that a woman, anybody for that matter, can do the things that this particular woman is shown to do. And the fact of the matter is, many of us, most of us, have had a woman like this somewhere in our lives. It might have been our mother, it might have been our grandmother, it might have been an aunt, it might have been a neighbor, it might have been a friend, it might have been a cousin, but most of us have witnessed and have been blessed by a woman like this in our lives. They may not have had all of these characteristics to all of this degree, but we can say that we have become what we are and who we are because we have women like this in our lives. Here is a picture of a wonder woman. Okay, uh, let's uh, bow for a word of prayer and then after that we're going to come back and talk together. Our Father, we thank you for this privilege and this opportunity to get a chance to see what a wonder woman looks like. And this is not a wonder woman that we have to go to some mythic island to find. This is not a wonder woman that has to be dropped down from the skies. This is our mother. This is our our wives, this is our daughter, these are our teachers, these are women who have been in our lives all of this time. They've demonstrated all of these characteristics. They have raised children. They have done miracles. They have been able to stretch food to feed multiple family members. All of these wonders they have done because they are virtuous, because they are wonderful, and because they fear God. God, we love you, we praise you, but today we thank you for them. In Jesus' name we pray and for his sake, amen. Okay, that's it for now. I'm going to step away. I'll step away and then I'll be right back. I'm going to ask you to ask me some questions and I'm going to ask you some questions as we talk about Wonder Woman, DC Comics Wonder Woman and Wonder Woman Solomon, this virtuous woman uh, that's in Proverbs 31 and uh, the wonderful women that are in your life. I'm going to step away, but don't you step away. I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. We're talking about Wonder Woman. And uh, if you have some questions, go ahead and type those questions in the box there. But I have a question for you, and uh, that is, um, do you think it is important for our young people, our young people, uh, women, girls in particular, to have superhero women, models of superheroes, whether they're Wonder Women or judges or doctors, or, do you think that's important and why? Okay, let me ask, uh, look at this question that uh, uh, good old Steve has put on here. Can angels be both male or female? Uh, that's a good question. I assume they can be, but uh, all of the angels that we have in the Bible are male, but we do not really know what gender really means when it comes to angels. So uh, to be safe, I'll say that all of the angels that we read about in the Bible are male, but that does not mean that they can only be male. Typically, when we talk about angels, we think about women, but in the Bible, mostly the angels, at least the ones who have names, they're all male. And by the way, angel means messenger of God. It doesn't particularly mean some divine being. It means a being who carries a message, a message from God. And to that degree, an angel can be male or female. 
What about this notion of, uh, Steve, you got questions. <laughs> you got questions. <laughs> Can we compare great women in our history to great women in the Bible, such as Harriet Tubman? Of course, of course, of course. Uh, we do have that. We have people who are in history in the Bible. We have people who are in our history. Some are, the, some are close in terms of the things that they did. So Deborah was a warrior and a fighter, and so was Harriet Tubman in her own way. But we have people who didn't do exactly the same thing, but they did something. They stood up for justice, for example, or they saved their family or they uh, provided for their husband or something like that. Or they were participants in a miracle. We have that. We have a long line of women uh, from the Bible on up to now who have uh, been a part of making us who we are today. What about the super women for women? So I'm just going to talk to Steve. Why don't I just do that? Just talk to Steve. <laughs> What's the best way for us to show our appreciation for the many virtuous women in our lives we are blessed by? That's a good question. I'm not going to say what's the best way, but I am going to say that we should show them in some way. Because the best way kind of varies on the person who you are trying to show the appreciation to and who the appreciation is coming from. But it is true that we should show some kind of appreciation on the regular for these women in our lives who who provide for us, who care for us, who who really work miracles and do miraculous things. And uh, they do it uh, with a sense of flair. They do it with a sense of uh, and sometimes ease. They fuss about it a lot of times, but they get it done. And it's amazing how they do. So Steve has already asked his three questions. Does anybody else have a question or a comment about Wonder Women? Okay, Lois. I think it's important for females to have a super, supra uh, Wonder Woman to give them motivation uh, or, or to motivate them to press and to be as the virtuous woman. Yeah, I think that's true. Um, you know, if you, can, uh, if you can see her, you can be her. And typically we almost have to see somebody in that role before we know it's possible, especially when around us we don't see it. But uh, to have those role models is so important. And you may not know that you may be somebody's wonder woman. So be careful how you walk, be careful how you speak, because somebody's looking at you to be like you and uh, looking at you as a hero in their eyes. Do you, I'm talking to women now, do you feel that it's fair or do you feel that it's real that women almost have to act like super women or wonder women just to make it in this world? Do you feel like it's an extra burden on you uh, that you have to do all this extra stuff so you just can't relax and just be a woman, but you got to be a wonder woman, you got to be a super woman in this world to survive? Do you feel, do you feel pressure? that uh, today's world requires you to be a wonder worker, to do all of these things at the same time, to do them well, and it's kind of pressure on you. How do you feel about that? Is that something, some kind of conflicted um, stress that you have? As we talked about the Incredibles, they had these incredible powers, but they were conflicted with this. They really didn't know whether it was a blessing or a curse. How do you feel about being designated as a wonder woman and being looked to and expected to do all of these things without sometimes any help. So the Wonder Women are working and they don't have time to type. <laughs> It seems to me that that is a stress that we put on our women. We expect them to do these marvelous things. We expect them to get all of these things done. And they expect these things of themselves, you know, to take care of the kids, take care of the husband, take care of the family, take care of the job. All of these things at the same time, juggling all of this stuff. It really takes a wonder woman, almost magician, to make all of those things happen. It's extra pressure. And that's why we ought to go back to what Steve said and appreciate those women in our lives who are able to 
pull that thing off. Well, uh, since it seems like the questions are drying up, I'm going to end right here. We're going to pick up here on Sunday and talk more about Wonder Woman, and uh, it's going to be a blessing. I'm sure it is, and you won't want to miss it, okay? We'll look to see you next Sunday, this coming Sunday. It's Communion Sunday, so make sure you're there. We'll see you then. And then on next Tuesday, we come right back to our superheroes one more time. God bless you. We'll see you next time.